Let's start with a prayer. Father, I thank you for your love. Thank you that you are a good girl, a generous father. I want to pray for your spirit of wisdom and revelation. Come, open our hearts and eyes and help us receive everything that you have prepared for us. Change us and transform us for your glory. Amen. I would like to start with a short story. There is a mountain, small mountain, in Swiss Alp. Very popular. Many people can go there and many groups are going there because it's easy to climb during one day. Normally people got it in the morning, they get the gears ready and they start at dawn. Halfway up, around noon, they get to a place that is called the halfway house. It's a place you can eat, you can rest. It's beautiful. All the views, wonderful. And food is good, good beer, if people like beer. And it's interesting because the owner of the house says that normally after lunchtime, only 50% people carry on. They're just happy, They're just content with what they have, what they have reached. And they just sing songs, make the most of it. The view is wonderful. They're just enjoying themselves. Around 4 p.m., people can hear a loud bell that comes from the outside. Normal people come to the window, a huge window, they can see beautiful mountain. And then they can see the friends getting to the top of the mountain, summit, summiting the mountain. And what is interesting that every single time this party atmosphere turns into the funeral atmosphere. Everyone who is there realizes that they could have had the lifetime experience. They could have been there, but they decided to stay halfway up. This story always moves me because I'm thinking about my life. I'm thinking about friends and people I know. And I've made many mistakes in my life. And it's a journey. But I would say that probably one of the most difficult one is when people give up. They just give in. They look back and they sort of satisfied where they are. They stop halfway up. And this is really a question for me today, which I want to ask you. I don't know where you are. I don't know how long you've been walking with the Lord. But I want to say to you this, God has more for you. God has more for you. In Jeremiah 29, 11, the Lord says, I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. I think that one of the problems is that we become satisfied with what we have and where we are. We say in England, don't settle less than God's best. And I want to really encourage you today just to do on one step forward, just to step up wherever you are. I want to enlarge your vision. I want to say that God, who is a good father, has more for you. In John 15, 5, Jesus says, If you remain in me, you will bear much fruit. Or later on we can read, you can bear long-lasting fruit. But there is the key, if you remain in me. Many people give up. Many people stop halfway through because they forget about the first part. They forget that everything, it's about the relationship. Everything starts with the encounter, but it's a process, it's the journey. And we carry on 
forget it about him. We forget that he is calling us and inviting us to spend time with him, to go to the secret place. That the secret place is the answer and the source of everything, of a fruitfulness of signs and wonders and miracles. And God is inviting us day by day, wherever you are, come closer, spend time with me, go deeper. And this is what I want to really encourage you. And in the church, we've got so many examples of saints who are full of joy, full of peace. And they are a great example to us and encouragement to me. But the secret is, they knew they have to spend time with him. They knew this quote, if you remain in me, it's about intimacy. It's about being with him. And from that place, God can create wonderful things. That's the source of miracles. St. Paul says in the Second Corinthians, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God, not from us. In a way, it's a kind of a paradox. We are who we are. We are sinners. We are fragile. We are selfish. Well, maybe me, or Joe, definitely. But also, we know it's not about us. I remember once, um, I've got five kids, uh, four boys and a little girl. And I think my, my little Susanna, she was three. And I was just about to go to, and pray. And I said to her, darling, that is going to pray. And she looked at me with her gorgeous eyes. And she said, daddy, sleep well. And I thought, oh my gosh, even my daughter knows what my prayer looks like sometimes. But this is the thing. We are who we are. We are sinners. And we are fragile. We are jars of clay, but with unlimited power. Not because of us, but because of him. We've got the same spirit who raised Jesus from the dead. The same spirit, the same Holy Spirit that filled all the saints who are great inspiration to us. And you've got the same spirit. He lives in you. And we have to learn how to receive and cooperate with him. And St. Paul says in Ephesians 5.18, do not get drunk, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. I wish we had more time. We could talk about the relationship, how to cooperate with him. And we've got great examples. Mary is a great example, full of the Spirit, but with a great desire to receive more. But this is my encouragement. Be open. Be hungry. Be thirsty of more. And learn how to cooperate with him. Well, where should we start? I would say this. Um, I've been in the community more than 17 years. Walking with the Lord. Well, since 1996. But a few years ago, I had a um, very important conversion for me. I was the prior of this house, um, and many things were happening. And, you know, many people were here, many projects. And I love my wife dearly and my, my family, and I love being with them. But I remember I was coming home, and my brain was constantly spinning. And I was thinking about this and that. Although I was physically present, in my head, I was someone else. I couldn't really enjoy being with my family. It's sad, but that's true. My work just took over and my projects and everything else. And I had a good chat with, uh, with Damien, who helped me a lot uh, and, 
I give great credit to him because of that. Um, and one of the main change was that I decided to have a daddy time, which is quite common actually in the community, when daddies and mummies have time one-on-one -on -one with their kids. It, it's very simple. We just have time with them that decide what we are going to do. It's not that I'm going to meet with my son and tell him what he should do. And it's really about being together, about enjoying being together and about having fun. So if you can imagine having five kids, most of my <coughs> evenings are taken. But probably that was one of the best decisions in my life. Because I, I noticed, or we noticed, me and my wife, something changed. Since we started to give them time, I started to really enjoy doing my work and being with my family. It was such a freedom. And moreover, it was such an encouragement to me. They started to ask questions about God, about prayer. They started to pray every day and read the Bible. We didn't tell them to do it. We knew it was God working. It was Him who was showing what He can do. He's the one who can change our hearts. I remember a lot of the story. Um, I think David was having an exam at school. Um, and he came to Aga, my wife, and he asked her, Mommy, Mommy, would you, would you pray for me? And she said, yeah, of course, I can pray for you. And, uh, and she said, well, but you also will pray for me. And my Aga, um, she has problems with, uh, she used to have huge problems with her tonsils. She had tonsillitis at least twice a year. And normally she has to take antibiotic or two for weeks, if not a month. And she got this um, white, whatever it is, mucus on the top of her tonsils. It was really bad. So she prayed for him. He prayed for her very simple prayer. He said, Jesus, just heal my mommy, more or less. And that was it. He went to school and he had a great day. And Aga woke up in the morning and she realized she was completely fine. She was completely healed. Nothing. Nothing white, no problems, no redness, nothing. I don't remember her being sick since that. And that was just an example of what God can do. It's not just about healing, but about God doing this amazing thing in our families, changing their hearts and showing how powerful He is. Since we made a simple decision, we sought our priorities. And that's what I want to encourage you. Think about the one you love. Think about those who are around you. And also, think about those who may be you, you can't meet. Maybe you hurt them. Maybe you messed up. Don't give up on them. Don't give up on those who are close to you. I've been there. I made this mistake. I had a, a situation where I, you know, I messed up. Um, I hurt someone in my family, and and nothing was nothing was happening for years. We we, we didn't see each other for years. And I was trying so many other things. And then I just sort of gave up. I thought, well, nothing can be done. And then <clears throat> one day I was praying and God convinced me, you don't give up on those who you love. And I repented and was praying for God's mercy. And then God opened the door. And we could meet. He received my forgiveness. And we reconciled. It was a great celebration of his love and mercy and this is my encouragement to you do not give up he loves them much more than you don't give up fight for them in love so family first second i would say be generous there is something about generosity about being aware of those who are around us. I remember uh, one day, normally every Tuesday we go to the streets when we pray for people. By God's grace, we've seen amazing things. People coming out of the crutches, stakes, people with, um, with uh, hearing aids, 
they don't need them any longer, and so many examples and miracles when God has changed and transformed people's hearts. I remember one day, um, I think I was with Miriam, um, who's a member of the community. We were walking down the street, and there was, a, there was a beggar. He was sitting in the corner, and we were trying to talk to him. And he was really interested. He was trying to talk about God's love, and we encouraged him to, to receive it. Nothing. And then we felt, well, is there anything we can do for you? He said, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm quite hungry. Right, um, can we buy you something? Yeah, I would like a burger with onions and a Diet Coke. All right, not a problem. We went to, to buy uh, some food for him. We got him exactly what he asked for. And then everything changed. He opened his heart. We gave him words of encouragement. He, he really choked. We, we, we could really speak about God's love. And, and, and he felt so blessed. And what was interesting, he said, he said to us, guys, mm, there's a friend of mine. He's sitting on the other side of the street. And he twisted his ankle. He's in such a pain. Can we go and pray for him? We went to that guy who was on the other side of the street. We prayed for him. It's a high street, okay? Plenty of people, we prayed for him in the middle of the high street. And he started to scream. He said, oh my God, I can't believe, I can't believe it. He could put his foot down, he was screaming. He said, God healed me. You could imagine people trying to see what's happening, looking around. It was a great sign of God's love and his power, what he can do. But also, great encouragement for us that often when we are trying to talk about God's love, it's good to start with showing how much we really care and love those who are around us. I was challenged by, by a quote I would like to read to you. It's from St. Basil the Great, a doctor of the church. He says this, when someone steals a person's clothes, we call him a thief. Should we not give the same name to one who could clothe the naked and does not? The bread in your cupboard belongs to the hungry. The coat hanging unused in your closet belongs to those who need it. The shoes rotting in your closet to the one who has no shoes. The money which you hold belongs to the poor. I think there was a great challenge to all of us. And I have to say, since, since that very moment, I made the decision to check my wardrobe every year. It's not a big issue, maybe for a man. I know that maybe women will struggle with that. Uh, but there are ways, what I'm saying, there are ways we can help. There are ways we can show and share a love and mercy. I don't have time to go into details, unfortunately, but I remember the first time going to Africa and seeing how people live, and how little they have, and how happy they can be. And in Acts 20, 35, it says, it is more blessed. In some translation, it says, make us happier to give than to receive. I think it's interesting because when we talk about kingdom of God, we talk about upside down kingdom. The world says, take it. It's all about you. Take it. The more you have, the better. And the thing is, the more we have, we don't feel more happy actually. But Jesus says, it's not just about you. Share, give, that will make you happy. It's all about love. It's all about love. And that's a great encouragement for us. And a challenge. Saints are great example. We can be happy when we share, when we give, 
when we are generous, when we look around, when we are aware of those who are around us. That's the gratitude, that seeing that all good comes from Him, that's counting our blessings. That's what released God's anointing. But first of all, that will appreciate and make us aware of His presence and His goodness. Next thing, face your fears. Face your fears. I would say that probably fear of failure, it's one of the biggest obstacles in our growth. Well, that's the reason why Jesus gave us more than 360 times encouragement, do not be afraid. We've got encouragement for every day. Do not be afraid. And I would say it's about choices we make. Choose love, not fear. Choose to love. For example, when we pray to be more patient, well, I thought that suddenly I would become more patient. And I remember once, I was I had an amazing time with the Lord. And then I came back to my house. And then it was this fight. And this was this uproar. And I was thinking, standing in the middle of the situation, there you are. You just prayed. And I gave you a chance to make a choice. And that's how it is. When we pray for more love, God will put us in situ into a situation where we can choose whether we can love more or not. Face your fears. Choose love. And the last thing I want to say, expect God in your daily life. Expect Him acting, talking to you, even about small things. I remember one day, I woke up in the morning and I felt that God said to me, clean your window by 10 a.m. I said, what? Clean my window by 10 a.m.? But I felt very strongly. And, and back then we were living in a top, top floor uh, in, in a house. And I couldn't access this window only from the scaffolding. We had some guys doing work outside. And that scaffolding was there for months. They left it behind for, I don't know, five or six months. And that was it. So I thought, well, I'm safe. You know, I can clean that window every day. And then we had, I think, morning prayer, went down, and I was doing something. And I came back at 11, thinking, oh, I forgot about this. Well, I went up, and the guys came. And they took down the scaffolding, and I couldn't clean the window. I was thinking, oh my gosh, why was that? And I thought, Father, who cares for his sons and daughters, will speak about simple things. So if you are a mother with kids at home, doing washing up or cooking, expect him to talk to you. When, if you are a teacher going to school, ask him, is there something he wants to do and say? If you're a builder, getting ready to work, think maybe he wants you to do something or say something. If you're in a situation where you meet someone in need who is sick, maybe you can offer a prayer. People are free. They can say no. It's a win-win situation. You can see God's glory or you can go in humility. It's always a win-win situation. Whatever we do, we should do it out of love. And this is our main motive. I wish we had more time. But I do believe that what I shared with you, I could encourage you and maybe a little bit enlarge your vision, saying that God has more for you, wherever you are, whatever you do. But it's about our decisions and choices we make every day. So today I want to encourage you, out of love, choose 
see what God is saying to you. What can you do? How can you come closer to Him? How can you bless those who are around you? Focus on Him. Because He wants to give you much more than you can imagine. Why? Because He loves you dearly. He is a good Father. And He has prepared amazing things for you. Saint John Paul II said, Future starts today. Today is the day when we can choose. We're going to show you a short video. When you are watching this, I want you just to imagine what God can do. There is nothing impossible to, for God. It's not just about healings and miracles. It's about Him. It's about Him working out of love and saying, I am alive and I can do anything for you because I love you. Amen. And in Jesus' name, I speak to these tumors, to these groves, fibroids. I command you, be gone, disappeared, shrivel up. And I curse you, cancer, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! What was your, your problem was the change? Uh, I had lots of breasts, uh, lots, lots of cysts in my breasts. And they were, uh, I could feel them through the skin. And after the prayer... Ha how many? Uh, lots of... Like five, uh, ten? No, no one counted because it was really... What, more uh, than ten? Uh, yeah. In, in both, both breasts? In both breasts. And some of them, they were really hard, so I could feel them through how, the skin. How big were they? Were they sort of uh, like the size of your fingernail? No, oh, this big? Very big, yeah. Can you show the people how big they were? Yeah. Can you see that? Some of the, the tumors in your breasts were as big as that. Yes. Like golf ball size. Size of a golf? Uh, yeah. I don't want to exaggerate. You yeah. say. Yes. And now I feel that my, my breasts are softer. <laughs> so yeah. Can you feel the lumps at all? No. You no. can't feel any of them? I can't feel. I and you could feel lots of them before? Yes. Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Glory to Jesus now. So if you've been blessed by this teaching or any of the other teachings that we've given or the services that we've run, uh, we'd really like to encourage you to like and share. If you, if you like the videos, they get pushed up and sent out to more people. Um, and if you want to kind of be in contact with us and, and see these teachings when they're coming up, we really encourage you to subscribe. If you press the subscribe button and then tap the bell button, you'll be reminded when these teachings are coming up so you won't miss anything. So if you'd like to do that, that would be really helpful uh, and we can get this, this grace of teaching that God's given us and the blessings that God's sharing with us out into a much wider body of people for their blessing and encouragement, their faith and the building up of the church. God bless.